Hello everyone, I am Mike Jones, the Education Manager with the Oracle Applications and Technologies User Group. Welcome everyone to this session titled Ascend 2021 Preview EBS Oracle Sessions with the VP of Product Strategy, Nadia Benjadu. Let's see, before we get started, I would like to go over a couple housekeeping items. Um, you will be on mute throughout the presentation. If you'd like to ask a question, please type it in the question box in the control panel at any time. Um, again, we are going to be talking about this event that we have coming up uh, called the Ascend 20, 2021 in Hollywood, Florida. We are partnering with the, another user group called OHUG. They, they kind of handle the HCM side. We kind of handle the EBS, ERP, and EPM side. Um, so we do have in-person and virtual options. We'll place a link to that conference in the chat area. Next, I'd like to turn it over to uh, one of the presenters today. Her name's uh, Nadia Benjadu. She's from Oracle. She's done, I mean, she's at every single event that we've ever had, um, mainly because she's with EBS and she does a fantastic job with us. I don't know what we do without her. So I really want <laughs> uh, a big thank you for Nadia for presenting this session. Go ahead and take it away. Thank you so much, Mike. It has been always a pleasure working with you and the OATUG as a whole. Uh, yeah, definitely we have done a great job and great. Uh, we have a great re working relationship <clears throat> and we delivered in 2020 two major events that uh, really is managed by yourself. So thanks for that. And we continue, of course, to collaborate uh, uh, on behalf of our EBS customers. So today, I just really want to give you a quick uh, preview of what we are planning to do at the Ascend Conference 2021. Um, so obviously, uh, it's a big conference for us, uh, for the eBusiness Suite Development Organization. It goes without a say, Cliff will be presenting at the conference. Uh, we don't know today whether he will be in person or not. Obviously, this is something uh, we will decide uh, very soon. But he's dying to be with you guys. He's actually so much looking forward to the conference and looking forward to be with you. Uh, as usual, Cliff will uh, kick off the EBS uh, keynote, the EBS uh, strategy and roadmap, uh, on Monday, the 16th of August at 11.15 a.m. in the morning. And obviously, there are some sessions before Cliff because of the timeline, because of the eight o'clock uh, slots. Uh, but definitely, the bulk of the session and the content from an EBS development organization will follow after Cliff's keynote. But Cliff is not going to be on his own. As usual, Cliff has a tremendous team joining him, uh, delivering content and update about eBusiness Suite development and the eBusiness Suite product line on various uh, product areas. So a cliff will be there, the central point, but obviously a lot of people also joining the conference. And you probably know the usual suspect uh, around cliff here, and uh, we will be there uh, presenting the latest and the greatest. So this team, uh, you probably know some of them, um, uh, maybe not, but this team will be delivering uh, 34 EBS development sessions. Uh, the Ascent and conferences in general is about learning, it's about networking, it's about sharing, and hopefully you will get that by attending the Ascent 2021. The 34 EBS development session break down into a number of areas. Um, across EBS, this is the yellow, uh, uh, the yellow bit in the pie chart. Uh, the cross EBS, it's usually every the content that we deliver that really applies to all product areas, all functional areas. It uh, things we do on like Cliff session is across EBS suite. Uh, when we talk about the strategy of a particular, for example, ECC, the strategy for uh, what's new in 12.2, the strategy of EBS or OCI, all of those things that have, they are not limited to one particular functional area, we call them cross EBS. Then we have seven, seven sessions in that uh, category. We also have 10 sessions 
that we uh, categorize as AppStack, and that is really the foundation of EBS, the platform, the application technology, we call them. And we have, uh, it's usually the biggest uh, category from the content. And of course, that also applies to all the functional areas of eBusiness Suite. So we have 10 sessions in that category. On the ERP, and what I, when I call talk about ERP, I'm referring here to the financial, procurement, and project. And in that area, we have a, a total of eight sessions between those three functional areas. In the supply chain, uh, we have nine sessions there. And uh, basically, this is what EBS is all about. However, we do, as Mike said early on, uh, Ascent is a collaboration between the OATUG and OHOG. And therefore, beyond this 34 EBS development session that are focused on the ERP, the supply chain across the EBS and AppStack, we also have a couple of sessions that are submitted and accepted by the OHAG, and that is for, for the HCM area, which is not re really part of the 34 EBS, but I will mention them in a while. So this is the team. Uh, this is what the content overall we are going to be delivering at the conference. Now, let's go a little bit deeper on what are we exactly talking about in the conference. So in the cross the EBS uh, uh, content, you will find the usual eBusiness Suite uh, strategy, obviously the latest and the updates since last time we talked to you guys. I know the last one was in December. Since then, we have the uh, new releases of the ECC, for example. So you will see the very latest on the ECC and Cliff will be very eager to uh, to share that. Uh, we have a session on what's the new, what's the latest on uh, on OCI, how what we have achieved uh, since last time. We talked about um, making sure the EBS uh, performs better on OCI and the cloud automation. Uh, one of my colleagues will be talking about what's new in 12.2 from a functional perspective, i.e. what's new in financials, what's new in procurement, projects, supply chain, and so on, at a, a certain level. We will obviously, without a doubt, uh, one of my colleagues will be talking about the latest on the best practices to upgrade to EBS 12.2. Uh, we have session six and seven. Six and seven really are um, focused on uh, ECC, and you will see what we have uh, released uh, only recently, which is in March 2021. So obviously, that's going to be total news for you guys. One session which I highlighted in yellow that is a totally new session that I have never actually delivered outside uh, Oracle. Um, I do this a lot for our internal field operation team, the, our sales, our pre-sales, our consulting, uh, to really train our internal people on understanding the licensing principle for EBS. But it became very obvious to me that this content should not be limited to the Oracle internal. Uh, based on the uh, numerous questions I get all the time from customers in conferences, and emails, I thought this session needs to be externalized and therefore it's going to be presented for the first time at the Ascent 2021. This is really to understand the EBS licensing, whether you are running on-prem and more importantly, what does it mean? What the impact, if any at all, when you move and your eBusiness suite from the your own on-premises data center to Oracle cloud infrastructure. It has been very topical, this subject, over the last four years. And I thought this is a, it's about time I deliver this externally. On the AppStack area, what we also call the ATG or the Application Technology Group within eBusiness Suite, we have a number of sessions uh, with the updates of the latest on 12.2. So you will see uh, the detail of running in the cloud, the strategy on the technology for, for eBusiness Suite platform, the upgrades, the integration, the uh, how do you, the best practices of maintaining the eBusiness Suite, uh, information about uh, online patching the latest, information about performance uh, uh, for the eBusiness Suite, how you can manage your customization when you get to 12 of 2 and so on. 
and of course we will talk about the latest uh, UI modernization. So again, this topic is really uh, uh, applies to all functional areas of the e-business suite. Now, in addition to that, we have obviously session in the ERP, we have session on financials, we have a couple of session in projects, actually three session on project. We have a number of session in the procurement. The procurement is a very, very active area. And uh, we, we just, uh, uh, it's an area which has been evolving, not only within EBS, but really the expectation on how you shop, how you do requisition has been evolving over the last so many years, the expectation of the user is uh, much higher than ever before. So you, that's why you see procurement is very, very uh, active and we have a number of sessions in, uh, uh, in the procurement area. So that is on the ERP. On the supply chain, in addition to the overall uh, supply chain optimization session on EBS 12.2, we have a drill down in this supply chain area. We have session on the order management product family, on the enterprise asset management, the logistic family, the service family, the uh, manufacturing, both discrete and process. And in that area, you will see what we have delivered lately in the, in the manufacturing, especially in the discrete with the network diagram that is a something that you probably have never seen before. Uh, we also will uh, give you an update on the outsourced manufacturing and the new command centers we have done in the uh, manufacturing as a whole. So that's a fairly rich uh, area of the supply chain. So this is the content we uh, have submitted and Mike and the OATUG have kindly accepted as part of the uh, Ascend 2021. In addition to that, as I mentioned early on, we have a couple of sessions in the HCM area uh, and uh, the umbrella of the OHUG. Uh, those sessions are um, very, very much in demand and they are going to be delivered by our HCM team. Uh, we also have an e-business suite support session. This is actually very topical and very important for I would say the majority of our EBS customers because uh, really upgrading to 19C is actual. It's what they are, what customers are doing today. Uh, the 19C certification has been accomplished a while back on premises, more recently on the database services in the cloud. And you can imagine uh, this is very, very active project most of our customers have to do, especially with the support timeline for the database 11GR2, as well as the 12C databases that are coming really to an end. And therefore, customers, in a way, are under the, uh, the pressure to, in a way, to upgrade to 19C. So 19C is very topical. So hearing from our a technical support organization about the upgrade analyzer for the e-business suite when you are upgrading to 19C. So that's uh, definitely not to be missed by our support colleagues. So that is really the content we are delivering um, uh, through the uh, user uh, conference sessions. So hopefully uh, you will join us uh, live or virtual to hear about all of that content. But let me first uh, give you an, some updates on our strategy for an EBS product. So we, we still get questions about is EBS uh, upgrade, is, up, is EBS updating the product, is EBS still in use, is EBS still liable option, etc. And I want to reassure you that the EBS is very strategic not only to EBS development, but to Oracle as a whole. It's the strategic to our customers as well. We continue to innovate in the EBS product. We have a long-term PIM support. Um, many of the world's largest ERP and HCM activities depend on EBS, and not today only, but for many, many years to come. So uh, continuing innovating the product to support our customer base is obviously our priority without a doubt. Uh, you probably see this, uh, uh, this slide to be updated on a regular basis. The current release of the e-business suite is 12 to 10. We delivered in September 2020, although we gave uh, an update at the OATEG uh, forum live 
in December, we do have some updates since then. Uh, since then also we have delivered a new ECC uh, that was March 2021, so that is uh, like a, a couple of months ago, so you will hear about the latest of, on ECC. So this is continue to be our uh, delivery mechanism of EBS will, del will be delivered, uh, delivering updates every uh, 12 months more or less, although it's not written anywhere, it's a commitment, but we, customers are expecting us to deliver something, an update every 12 months, and we will do our best to fulfill that uh, expectation from our customers. Now, the that, so that's on the longevity of EBS. Now, EBS 12.2 in particular is the release that has the premium support through at least 2032. So a couple of years ago, we said until at least 2030. Last year, we said 2031. This year, which is about um, a month ago, we have announced to 32. So you can expect that pattern to continue for, for the next few years. So you would expect something like next year around March, April timeframe, you will see a 2033 and so on. So the 2032 is really not a solid uh, uh, fixed uh, date, is basically the date that uh, our revenue recognition allows us to communicate externally to fulfill the uh, 10 years support windows that we are giving to our customers. So, you know, from a year, a year from now, you probably will see the same slide but it's going to be 2033. So honestly, uh, EBS customers will continue to EBS for many, many years beyond that. And uh, I actually personally do not see an end date for an EBS product because we have a very, very, very important customers relying and depending on EBS, not only today, for many years to come. Uh, so 12.2 is what we call the continuous innovation release. It's the release that you will not see a 12.3, you will not see a 12.2, or uh, 12.13, uh, or what, a 12.3, for example. It is always going to be 12.2.x. That is why we call 12.2 is the continuous innovation release. No further major release upgrade is needed. Meaning if you are on a 12.2, you have already done your last upgrade. If you are still on 12.1, you have one last upgrade today to, to do, which is to land on 12.2. And once you have done that, no more upgrade whatsoever. And when I say no more upgrade, I mean no more rapid install. For those technical people in, in the audience today, upgrade means a rapid install. Uh, rapid install is uh, basically a major upgrade project where customers dread of the rapid install because you have to lay down the technology stack and the pro product files, and then you need to do the upgrade and you need to reconfigure your customization and so on and so on. All of that is not going to happen anymore. If you are on 12.2, you have already done your last. If you are still 12.1, one more time to do that, and that's that's it. So we will continue to provide X, X, dot X release, as I have seen every, I have showed you a slide early on, every 12 months interval, which is really something we have been uh, uh, fulfilling over the last so many years. In addition to the fact that uh, we, you, we, there is no going to be any more upgrades, no more uh, uh, rapid install. But at the same time, we will continue to bring innovation in the product. We will continue to bring new features, new capabilities, but it's still going to be in 12.2, which means uh, new innovation without the, uh, the cost and the effort of a major upgrade. Now, our commitment to our EBS customers remain the same. Our commitment is really centered around uh, three type of investment uh, we have in, in for, for the product. We are committed to enhance our user experience um, and modernization of the e-business suite. We have committed to in, uh, enhance the, pro the, the feature function as needed 
and as requested uh, to really respond to the customer's enhancement request, as well, of course, as fulfilling the some of the regulation requirements that are mandated by the countries and so on. So we improve the user experience, the user interface, uh, increase the productivity, we enhance our functional uh, capabilities based on the customer voting enhancement, based on certain business processes uh, and, and regulation. And finally, we continue to enhance our operational efficiency, i.e. the operation of operating the run and maintain of the e-business suite. We improve our online patching, we improve our technology stack update, which is basically uptaking the latest Fusion middleware, which is a, a humongous piece of work for us. And at the same time, uh, making sure that OCI is the best platform, the most optimized platform for e-business suite workload. So you will be happy to see this slide is a commitment. This slide is uh, showing our investment priorities. And this slide, hopefully you see it, um, you have seen it in the past and you may see, well, I have seen this slide already, but that's actually good. That means that we are maintaining our commitment to those investment priorities, user interface, functional innovation and operational efficiency. So our content at the Ascent 2021 will be focused in these areas. We will be delivering, and hopefully you, ha you would have seen based on the sessions we have submitted and shared a few slides away, the, the modern user interface. We, we deliver, we, we will be covering the 12 to 10, although we have covered that in December event, we will continue to talk about 12 to 10 because many customers who are still on 12 to 1, 12 to X is a roadmap for them. Every 12 to 2 release, since the beginning of 12.2, either 12.2.3, 12.2.4, 12.2.5, all the way to 12.2.10, all of those feature functions are obviously news to any customers who are running on 12.1. For customers who are running 12.2.7, 12.2.10 is news for them. But we are not going to stop there. We're going to share also what we are working on, which is going to be delivered in 12.2.11, which is our next release of the eBusiness Suite. Uh, you would expect it based on uh, the uh, timeline support. You would expect something um, summer or, uh, or autumn time frame for the 12 to 11. So we will be sharing what's coming and as a roadmap. Uh, in the operational efficiency, we will be talking a lot about the OCI, especially the ha we have delivered new automation release for the cloud manager. And that release is called 21, which is the year 21-1-1, which we have released uh, recently. So again, that's something we have not shared with you uh, in, a, in a conference like this before. So it's the first time you will hear us about talk about it. Now, of course, you will find all that content in the uh, Ascend user conference. You see here the URL. Uh, it is a combination of both the OATUG uh, that's where and Mike and here we are talking about, but also the OHUG uh, to cover the HCM area. So with that, I really come to the end of what we are planning to, to do it at the as Ascend. This is just a small preview and hopefully uh, you will join us in the live event and um, I'm open to any questions. Mike, if there are any questions, please let me know. Okay, I will. Uh, just. A quick reminder to everyone, if you do have questions, please type it in the question box in the control panel. We'll try to get to your questions. Um, this is really based on Ascend and Ascend content. Uh, we don't want to get too much into the weeds with real, real technical questions. You can either ask those if you go to Ascend, or um, we can kind of cover an area where you can ask them directly to Oracle or directly ask them uh, through the OETUG. Um, I do want to let you know, this is a reminder to everyone, we will be posting this recording along with the slide deck in the knowledge base and on the SM website, uh, so everyone will have access to this. I would like to let everyone know how beautiful the property is uh, at um, SM. It's at the Diplomat Resort. It's right on the beach in Florida. We've never done a conference like this before. I don't know if you've, anyone's ever attended a Collaborate 
it's right there on the beach so you can directly walk out to it go for a swim in the ocean it's a beautiful resort and property so um, if you do have budget you do want to go uh, please travel there i know nadia in her sessions um how many you have around 33 sessions nadia the um they're always highly attended highly loved highly rated so um not only do you get all of nadia and her sessions you also we also have a lot of great user sessions so you can actually hear people using ebs hear their stories network with them talk with them about specific questions problems um, solutions um, storytelling any of that stuff is always great to have we do have a couple of information we have, we have a couple of questions coming in we'll see um how you can handle them nadia someone was asking okay. about um any kind of free or online learning that you that you uh that any trainings that you have for free for ebs uh r12.2.4 do you have any of those nadia or are you just doing some sessions um yeah via the work okay. Website? okay well obviously uh we have delivered the uh, uh, similar content in December with the OATUG forum in December and I am sure Mike can share those with you yep. but in addition whenever we whenever we um, come up with a new release our release vehicle uh, starts with our documentation the official documentation with something called the RCD which is the release content document the RCD is an inventory of all the new features uh, per product per release uh, and we have something like over 20 RCD uh, you take a, a particular RCD you will see what's new in 12 to 8, 12 to 7, 12 to 9, 12 to 10 and so on per a, month, a functional area it's basically an inventory in addition to that, when let's say you, you see a feature in the RCD that you like, uh, we have a, an associated recording called TUI, Transfer of Information. Transfer of Information is a recorded by the developer uh, who developed the feature, and it basically tells you why did we develop the feature, how can you implement it, etc so that is a recorded by development it's a TOI transfer of information so the way you would go about it you start with the RCD you go to the TOI and you find that information in addition to that this is what we call our official release or, or our official launch program for any EBS updates in addition to that we have what we call directly from development um, content like uh, this type of conference which we deliver uh, uh, worldwide but to tell you the truth the OATUG conferences for us is the biggest conference there is no other conference in the world that we deliver 34 sessions it's basically you never find something like that beyond OATUG so in addition to the RCD the TUI uh, conference content uh, I'm sure you find plenty if you only have enough time and enough hours in the day. <laughs> yeah, this this conference will be different than anything we've done in the past in that it is um, it is face to face and virtual. So what we were going to be doing is we're going to be recording all sessions and then providing them for attendees um, to view afterwards. So if they can't like uh, if they have two sessions that are running concurrently because we are running 24 rooms of uh, concurrent education if you miss something that you really wanted to see you will have the option to to view it uh, in the past all you could really do is view the slides but you actually watch the sessions this time you can also also look at the slides afterwards as well i would like to also point out that uh, all of nadia's sessions and most of the sessions that we have um, at the conference will be um, CPE um, availables for them so you can get continuing education if you're in accounting you need those uh, you need those CE, CPE credits uh, those will be available so you'll be able to get CPEs for all these sessions as well okay we do have a couple of questions coming in this one I do have one that doesn't really talk about um, EBS I'm not sure if you'll be able to answer this one but uh, any information on Microsoft dropping IE and moving to Edge? 
Not sure if you'd know that one, Nadia. Uh, to tell you the truth, I don't know. I don't know how to answer it. I can, I can investigate it. I'm sure our technical team is following what Microsoft is doing when it when it comes to certification of the browsers. Uh, I wouldn't say it's not uh, related to EBS uh, because it does and it has an impact. Because if Microsoft is moving from one browser to another, etc., then uh, our technical team would have already investigated. So um, I would appreciate if you send me that question. I will follow it up with our technical team to see how much investigation and what's our roadmap uh, for the uh, certification. Perfect, well, thank you. I'm glad I did ask that. Um, next question is, um, I'll put it in the chat area also. Will EBS have um, the same set of new features that are available or getting developed in Oracle Fusion? Well, uh, I get the same question the other way around. Is Fusion going to have the same functionality uh, that, that EBS has and has been uh, developing over the last 30 years? So I think the question is, uh, it depends. It depends what the customer expectation is. Um, it's very hard to compare feature function because customers who are doing or doing SaaS, they are doing SaaS for a different reasons. So features we develop in Fusion may not be needed in EBS or vice versa, depending really. It's not really a function feature comparison. I would hate to do uh, publicly uh, this type of comparison. Uh, but if you have a particular feature, you would like the EBS product uh, to, to, uh, to produce or to, um, to develop, let us know. We have what we call this um, enhancement request social media where you can create an idea in our most uh, my oracle support community for a particular function for example in procurement you you want to you want us to develop a feature in procurement you go to the procurement mass uh, community and create an idea that idea gets voted on by your peers by uh, lots of people and the more people they vote for it the more attraction gets to our development etc so instead of really Talking about a feature in Fusion, I wouldn't know. Um, other than if you have a feature you want us to develop, please ask us and let us know by submitting submitting enhancement request. Okay, well, thank you for that. Um, we have another question. Will Oracle participate in other ways apart from the conference sessions? Um, I can speak a little bit on this. Uh, I will work with Nadia and her team that uh, that uh, can or cannot make it on site. We may have some virtual sessions from Oracle. We're hoping a lot of them will be face to face, but um, I think with uh, kind of the vaccine rolling out and everything, um, we're going to try to get as many Oracle speakers there as possible. If we do, we could have some um, meet the expert sessions like we've had in the past. Um, yeah. If Cliff goes, I know uh, in San Antonio we did, uh, Cliff had his keynote kind of roadmap and then we also put him on a riverboat. So we did have a riverboat yeah. session so people uh, were able to jump in a riverboat and ask him questions. Um, we are on the beach, so there are lots of different options. We're still kind of working those out with how um, the conference shapes out. So there's, um, I'm always, I always love doing different type sessions like that. So I'll keep something kind of yeah. in my mind and see if we can pull them off at the conference. Um, so another and, question. And, and, and Mike, just to, to add to that, we really are open to what type of content you want us to cover. I mean, beyond the conference ascend in August, if you think there is some sort of content that you would like us to cover, please do ask the OETUG, and uh, I'm sure we can schedule something. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, that's a great point. The, again, that's like a meet the expert session where uh, you can actually sit down with uh, an Oracle person or, or we have a, a great set of volunteers that would be able to answer any specific questions you may have. Um, we did get another question in here. Um, is the Ascend 2021 all Oracle EBS? Are there any Oracle Cloud sessions? Um, 
Nadia was just covering the EBS side. We do have um, over 30 uh, cloud, it's now called cloud ERP sessions uh, for Oracle. So we definitely have a lot of cloud sessions and we will be doing another preview of the cloud, um, of the cloud ERP sessions. And we'll also do another preview. We're gonna to try to do another preview of the uh, Oracle technical sessions with some of our technical users. Um, those will be good to have as well. Um, next question. This one's uh, an interesting one uh, for you, Nadia. I'll put it, again, I'll cut and paste it, put it in the chat area. Uh, is there any consideration for extending market-driven support for 12.1 beyond 2023? Um, that's a good question. Uh, we are in 2021. Uh, we have committed today to 2022 as well as 2023. So technically speaking, unless uh, actually let me just uh, look at my slide. Uh, let me just get something out because uh, I know if I am not mistaken. Uh, if I am not mistaken, okay, yes, um, the MDS is available for 2022 and 2023. Beyond 2023, today is not on the plan, but that doesn't mean plans cannot be changed depending on what uh, the customer base, etc. So this is what we currently have. Um, you know, we will see. We will see beyond 2023. Hopefully, uh, customers have plenty of time between now and 2023. If they still cannot make it uh, be, uh, by the end of 2023, it's something we, now, we need to review uh, at that time. But today, uh, that's the commitment we are making today, 2022, 2023. All right, well, thank you for that. Here's another question that came in. Um, how does the virtual online attendance work? Uh, we're gonna simply uh, run uh, our attendance. If, you, if anyone attended um, OATG Live back in December, uh, we used a platform called Jujama um, and attendees were attending it by clicking on a link that sent them through Zoom. So we're gonna do the same exact thing for this. Um, it's essentially virtual and face-to-face. -face. So we'll have speakers in the rooms. You'll hear their audio and you'll see their slides if you're attending it virtual or online. You, we will have a room monitor uh, that, that will not only monitor the room, but be also watching the chat in Zoom. So if you want to ask questions to the speaker, uh, you just type it into the, into the chat area of Zoom and we'll get that question to the speakers. Um, it's going to be a very interesting process. We have done an online event before, and of course we've done lots of face-to-face -face event before, so we're just going to kind of merge them into one seamlessly. We will have some presenters that'll be virtual. Most of our presenters will be face-to-face, -face, so um, that's kind of how it's going to work. Uh, the, the conference platform that we use is absolutely great. Uh, easy to use, easy to get into, easy to see, easy to chat with other attendees. Um, and you'll be chatting, you, know, you could be a chatting with someone that's face-to-face -face and virtual back and forth. So um, we, we will be using both. So if you are considering it and you can't travel, uh, please consider joining the virtual because you'll be able to get a lot of your questions answered either way. Um, here's another one for you, Nadia. And I'm gonna put this one in the chat area as well. Um, is there any comparison slash mapping of feature of feature available between EBS, Oracle EBS and Oracle Cloud Fusion? Uh, I think this is similar to the earlier question. Is there a feature in, is, um, are you developing features in EBS that are being developed in Fusion? Um, I, I personally, uh, don't develop a comparison between EBS and Fusion. It's uh, I feel it's not uh, the right thing to do. Um, I feel uh, Oracle has a number of products and customers uh, have been given a choice. Uh, they evaluate the product 
each product at its own merit. Some customers find SaaS uh, meets their business requirement and its strategic direction for Oracle. Why not? Some customers don't find, um, find EBS is a better fit. Uh, and so really at the beauty of the Oracle strategy is that Oracle is giving you the choice to choose what is best. Uh, for your for for your business requirement because when you compare feature function, uh, it doesn't mean those features that are in Fusion are needed for customers, and it doesn't mean that those features in EBS are not in Fusion or SaaS that are needed by the customer. So it really need to be evaluating what the customer needs first, and then see what the product best fit for that particular customer this is how i um this is how i go about it but i will not personally provide a comparison between two of my children personally i mean oracle ebs and oracle cloud fusion are two children of oracle i don't think it's wise for oracle to compare two of its children this is how I would do it. I mean, if I do not comp if I have only, <laughs> luckily, I only have one child. But if I had two kids, I don't think I would want to compare them publicly. <laughs> Good to know. Um, <laughs> next, we have uh, is, I, and I think I can answer this one, but Nadia, you may be able to help. Uh, is there an Oracle Open World event for 2021? I have not seen one. I just went to their website, and it still says they're they're going to get back to us at some point yeah so. <laughs> that's good yeah again, good answer, Mike. <laughs> again this is the only uh really face-to-face -face, uh user oracle user event um that i've seen for 2021 i know uh, there's a little co other competition out there and everyone else is hosting things virtually um, we had a couple of responses to the Oracle Edge. Um, someone said uh, EBS Forms won't display an Edge. Uh, JWS is compatible with all browsers. Um, we use Java Web Start. Uh, Activate X is dead. Um, someone was asking about the conference fees. If you go to the website, the conference fees, and this is actually kind of good to mention. Uh, if you go to the registration play page, um, OETUG members uh, obviously pay the least. Um, it's uh, eleven ninety five, and this is uh, if you book before the early bird. The early bird ends at the end of this month, which is really important because you'll save about thirty percent if you book before June thirtieth. We're definitely having the face to face. Uh, we've done a site visit. We have. Um, we're we're already seeing a lot of members and associates signing up for this conference. So we're definitely having it. So if you are planning on going, I highly recommend you book before the early bird rate ends June 30th. Um, so yeah, if you're staying in the hotel block, it's 1195. If you're not a member, uh, it's 1495. And then if you stay outside the hotel block, it's 1495. Uh, for members and $17.95 for non-members. And again, those prices will go up 30% uh, after that. So make sure if you are planning on going, whether you're booking virtual or face-to-face, -face, you do that before June 30th. Uh, all right, this is another question for you, Nadia. I'll be interested to hear how this one goes. Um, would ADF be included in future releases as a standard for EBS? The technology foundation for EBS is uh, still forms and OAF. And we have no intention of adding a third user interface or um, another uh, framework. So ADF is not what EBS uses. Uh, we use OAF. So please continue to use OAF. You, you probably would hate us if we added a third UI. <laughs> so, but remember that OAF works on the J developer, which is st still the same technology component of uh, ADF. So more or less is really, you are not necessarily getting uh, 
more with ADF that you cannot do with any OAF. Maybe some few things, but it's still based on the same technology component, which is JDeveloper. All right, thank you. Um, there's another question here, and I cannot answer this one. I'm not sure you will be able to either, Nadia. Um, are there any events or conferences for Oracle ASCP? ASCP is the Advanced Supply Chain Planning, which is uh, basically the planning engine that you deploy usually externally from any ERP system because you are you are collecting plans from external system. External system could be EBS, it could be PeopleSoft, it could be JD Edward, it could be any ERP. Uh, you could be even plan you can be even collecting planning from multiple sources of EBS systems. Are there any events and conferences for Oracle ASCP or alone? Uh, it's going to be fairly limited if you are only looking, if there is a conference that is only for ASCP. Um, I am not aware of a conference that is dedicated to the advanced supply chain planning, uh, but um, you know, it's part of the edge apps, unless you are, and again, I think I need to qualify what you mean by ASCP component, because ASCP could be the, the, the mantra, the GLO, the, the mantra, the, um, what's this, what's the another one? The dimension, there is another module in that area, or just the planning itself. I am not aware of an event that is dedicated to one area, which is ASCP. Okay, thank you. Um, here's another question for you. Uh, are there any plans for EBS to uptake forms version 12C? That's part of our um, the, the Fusion middleware uh, uptake. You remember when I talked about the, um, the technology stack update? Let me just go back to one of the uh, screens. I talked about here. Uh, I talked about the fact that you can um, up, uh, uh, move to uptake the new features of EBS without an upgrade. But I also talked in this slide about uh, we still will be updating the technology stack. Today, as you know, the Fusion Middleware 11 is the technology foundation today. Uh, usually, when you upgrade your middleware tech stack, including forms and JDevelop and all of that stuff, which is a technology foundation for EBS, usually in the past, it means new EBS release. So technically, if we follow the same standard as the release cycle of EBS history, we would, to take a Fusion Middleware 12, we would do a 12.3 or a 13. But we have just committed in this slide, they will not be a 12.3 and they will not be a 13. It will always be 12.2. At the same time, I am saying we will give you a technology update. Uh, so yes, definitely there will be a technology, uh, Fusion Middleware technology update. Is that going to be 12C? Is that going to be uh, 13, is that going to be uh, 2023, 2025? I cannot confirm at this point. All what I'm saying is we are working on a paradigm shift that allows us to take any future middleware technology component without a major, without forcing you to a new release of uh, eBusiness Suite. So this is what we call the continuous innovation release. And we are working on that. We are not communicating when that will happen, uh, but um, don't. Uh, it's not something I can communicate today. But yes, we will be taking a later release of the Fusion middleware with the later release of the components in that Fusion middleware at some point in time, but it's not limited to a particular release of the eBusiness Suite. It could come anytime that will apply to any 
EBS 12.2 release. It will apply to 12.2.4 onwards. You can still stay, for example, running 12.2.5 with the Fusion middleware latest release, let's say in 2025. That's a commitment we have made. Any Fusion middleware technology stack we will uptake in the future will apply to all the EBS 12.2 release starting 12.2.4 onwards. All right, um, I'm not seeing, oh wait, we do have one more. Dropped in the last second. We have a lot of people on this call, so we are getting quite a few questions. Okay, is Oracle making uh, same or similar investment for product development roadmaps of EBS versus SaaS? Well, I'm honestly, uh, I'm here to talk about EBS. Obviously, that my role is EBS. If you have any questions about what needs to be done in the EBS, I am happy to take them on board. Uh, whether talking about fusion is not really my role in at least in this call in this call here. When we when EBS develops a strategy and the roadmap of feature function, we don't necessarily look what PeopleSoft is uh, roadmap. Every product line has its own roadmap. Every product line has a has a uh, investment priorities. Uh, every product line has uh, uh, industry priorities, and they may be the same, but they don't have to. Okay. And basically, the EBS uh, uh, investment priorities are, as I explained in the previous slide, fall within three categories, enhancing the user experience, adding new feature function as, re as requested by our customers, as well as improving the operational efficiency to run and maintain your e-business suite. Those are the three teams for EBS uh, strategy and investment priorities. I actually don't know what this, what are they for SaaS team? You may want to ask the SaaS team that question. All right, I'm not uh, seeing any other questions. Um, I'd like to thank Nadia for all her support. Um, she continues to give uh, OETUG and our members a tremendous amount of support. And of course, going to these events is one of the uh, the best ways uh, to learn and to and to grow. So uh, I know with uh, the craziness of COVID, we hope that uh, it's, everything's going to end. I know um, a lot of us that are attending have been vaccinated, so. Um, kind of eases our minds a little bit. So I uh, hope everyone will show up and have a great time. Thank you very much for uh, Mike for organizing the session today and of course for the whole conference. <laughs> Hopefully uh, we see you soon. Thank you everyone. All right, this will conclude the webinar. Thank you.